women's session, all women. How great is this, right? And we love our guys, but this is really great. And one of my favorite things to do is to sit around and like hang out and the, I mean, the only thing we're missing is my triple batch of cookie dough, right? Cookie dough is the best way to do girl time. Or one of my other personal favorites, do you guys remember Dunkaroos? Do you guys remember Dunkaroos? Just take like that big uh, rainbow icing and, and, oh, you have them in your pocket? Oh, love it. Okay, Sh share, pass it around. Um, and take Teddy Grahams and yeah, oh yeah, okay. So I want us to pretend like we're just hanging out like at my house, girl time with a triple batch of cookie dough, right? Because that is what this talk is about. Um, it can be so hard, and I know that it's just crazy. And when I'm not hanging out with women or hanging out with the guys and talking about life, I'm usually hanging out with these cool people. So this is, these are my kids. This is Thomas, and it's really funny because Thomas is seven. And I'm a little concerned because he totally struck that pose on his own. So, uh, GQ, look out, right? And he, um, he's got like the senior pose working, right? And this is my son, Fulton. Any Fulton Sheen fans in the house? Can I give it up? Okay, Fulton is a dolly. He is, can you tell he's Henri? Can you just tell? Yeah, isn't he sweet? And then baby Kate. So, Kate just turned two. She is crazy. She is so fun, curly hair. So this is my family. This is what, when I'm not hanging out with cool girls like you guys, this is who I'm hanging out with. And y'all just saw my husband are like, oh, what a handsome man, right? I call him Superman. You can cheer, it's okay, he's a very handsome man. And I call him Superman. I really enjoy hanging out with him. He makes me holy. And he is an amazing man. And so I always, when, when I wanted to show you guys a picture of my family because I just want you to know like, my going from junior high to high school to college and beyond was such a hard time in my life. And now that I kick it with my kids and hang out, I want to do anything that I can do to be there for you. Anything, I'll do anything for you. And that's why I'm here today, because the title of this talk is Made For More. And I can't tell you how excited I am to get to share with you just some things that I wish that I would have heard when I was sitting where you guys are. I wish that I would have been on a Steubenville conference when I was your age. And so I'm up here to tell you what it is that, I mean, obviously made for more, we all know that. But the world is kind of, the number one thing that girls come to me and say is they're like, Sarah, I'm like, how you doing? So I, I always say like, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine, I'm so good, I am so good. And then like two seconds later, they're like in tears and they're like, I'm such a mess. <laughs> like, I'm such a mess inside. Anybody ever feel like a mess inside? No hands, just screams, right? No, just kidding. Um, I'm a mess inside, right? And I hear it over and over and over again. It's because the world knows how to mess with us, right? You look at chick flicks and love songs and romance novels, and Nicholas Sparks just has us wrapped right around his finger, doesn't he? I mean, that's just, he knows how to get to us, right? I mean, it plays out typically like this. Friday night, girls night, everybody's huddled together, right? We all got our Snuggies and our hoodie footies and we got little Debbie in one hand and we're just like ready to go, right? Chick flick movie marathon. Pick your flavor. You have nerdy flirty, my personal favorite, bad boy goes altar boy, part two, right? Um, you know, and after the first one, you're like, oh, that was so great. Let's do it again. She throw in another one and then it's like, okay, by like one o'clock in the morning, the, you know, the last movie ends, the credit roll, the credits are rolling, and all of a sudden you like stand up and untangle yourself out of your blanket and you take the remote and you chuck it against the wall and you're like, when's it gonna be my turn? When is Mr. Perfect gonna walk into my life and ride off into the sunset on that horse? Because I need a horse with a guy on it right now. <laughs> right? And what do we do? We, I mean, well, first of all, your friends are like, whoa, girl, you just said that out loud, and you just messed up your remote control, right? And you sit there, and what do you do? Well, until about three in the morning, you vent about how, like, what the heck, I'm doing all the right things. Like, why won't God send me this perfect man? Like, why don't I get to have this? Why don't I get to have that? And then you go to bed, and you're frustrated, and then you wake up, and you're frustrated, and then you go to class, and you're like, man, this is just too much, right? And then you see him, this guy that, like, you're like halfway attracted to, and he's like walking past the cafeteria, and he's like, hey, and you're like, I want you. <laughs> now, right? So, I mean, naturally, what do you do? I mean, well, naturally, you start mentally stalking him, right? 
I mean, come on. You think about like your first date and you're like trying to recall the smell of him as he walked by you. Like, what was that? Oh, what, aqua de joe, was that aqua de joe? Yeah, that was aqua de joe. Mentally, you're just like, um, what's your first date gonna be like? And you know, you have that all planned out and you know, where is he gonna propose? And you have the ring and the dress, Pinterest board done, we're good, right? Like, <laughs> mentally stop, he is all figured out. And then when, when you finally have that going, you're like, okay, I guess we'll move to Facebook talking, right? So you jump on Facebook and you look at 1,245 pictures of him and his Uncle Bill on their fishing trip and you like see his dog and you're like, this is the cutest golden retriever I've ever seen in my entire life. And, and then you see a picture with him, like with his arm around a girl and you're like, oh, that better be his sister. And you know, you start looking at it and then you're like, okay, we've moved. I'm getting his phone number. Like we've become instant creepers and like the guy's stupid enough to put his number on his Facebook page, so we're gonna text him, right? So. You start texting, right? Oh, texting. Start flirting, and then you start calling, and then you start physically stalking him. <laughs> Amen? So I call this the emoto coaster. And the reason why I call it the emoto coaster is because it's a lot like a roller coaster. Okay, imagine you're at the amusement park, right? You're you, four hours in line, you can smell the asphalt burning through your flip flops, right? And you're like, this ride is gonna be epic and you finally get to the front of the line and you get on the roller coaster and you're like, ching, 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 and you're like, yes! And then you get to the top and it drops you, right? And your stomach falls and your head is like going back and forth, back and forth and you have whiplash and this, the ride comes to a grinding halt and you get out and you throw up in front of everyone. And you're like, I actually paid for that. Awesome, right? Anybody ever been in a relationship like that? Anybody ever watched that relationship happen? Yes. You don't have to raise your hands, yes. Um, I call it the emoto coaster because, you know, it's hard. You know, everything's coming at us, the world's coming at us. They've set that standard, they've set the ideal, and the emoto coaster is in full swing, right? So when we watch the emoto coaster, now, I want you guys to hear me loud and clear. I love texting, don't know what I do without it. I love Facebook, you know, I, all those things. Mental stalking, there would be no relationships if there wasn't a little bit of mental stalking, right? But are there, occasionally maybe a few traps, right? Mental stalking, you're building up the unknown. He doesn't know who you are yet, and it can be creepy, right? Facebook stalking, you're getting into his personal life. Like, let him tell you about himself, right? What about texting? Has anyone ever been misinterpreted in a text before? B's and D's, baby, B's and D's. Don't you wish there was a cancel button? I'm always like, oh, wait, wait, come back, right? You know, texting and calling, staying up late at night, revealing a lot about yourself. It can be really addictive. And then physically stalking. I laugh, like physically stalking. I don't necessarily mean like following him around, right? Well, kind of. Um, physically stalking him. Have you guys ever had that, you know, couple where it's like you're good, she's your good friend and all of a sudden she's just not around anymore? Like she dropped everything and now she's, well, we don't really know where she is, but we're pretty sure she's with him, right? Physically stalking him. You start going to things just because he's there. You start doing things just because he wants you to. It's, it, it is a form of physically having to be together all the time. So you guys know, we as women, when you watch a guy physically use a woman, we all can see that. And we look at that and we go, what a jerk. Like, he's using her physically. We can see it with our eyes. But we as women, we use guys emotionally all the time. And we think that they can't see it and we think that we're not doing it. I want you to think about this whole idea of use. It's a word that we don't even like to say it. We don't even like to use the word use. But it's a well-known fact, you guys. Men will use love to get sex. Women will use sex to get love. But the problem is, is that the word isn't love, it's use. And it's what I call the cycle of use. And I want you guys to know, oh sorry, the cycle of use, whenever it starts moving, it's very hard to stop. No one ever says, okay, so we just had our Friday night, you know, it's one o'clock in the morning, like, have you ever texted a guy and just said, I'm really alone, could you come over and snuggle for like an hour, please? I need to use you. Does that text ever go out? No. How about this, how about a guy says, calls you up and says, hey, can I use you for like 20 minutes tonight? Has that text ever gone out? No. 
Terrible pickup line, right? What is my point? We just don't want to use the word use, but we, women, guys, we have to call it out, right? Because there's so much damage being done. I want you guys to close your eyes and think of a time, I want you to close your eyes and think of a time that you were used and you knew it. Whether it was physically or emotionally, a time that you were used and you knew it was happening. Think about a time that you used someone else. Think about a time when you watched your best friend be used, either physically or emotionally, and you knew it. Or think about a time where you watched your best friend use someone else, and you knew it, and you didn't do anything about it. You can open your eyes. I, those are like four of the heaviest questions. Like even in my own life, right? Like you get emotional about it because it's like, dang, we are the walking wounded. We are, all of us, myself included. I am walking wounded. The insecurities, the fact that you just never feel like you're quite enough. Maybe times where you've been rejected by guys, by fellow women, all the competition, all the comparing, all the times where you have that intense fear of failure. Maybe you've you know, fallen into a dark time and you've lost your virginity or you've given it away or you've had it taken away from you. Maybe you've fallen into some times where you look back and you're like, how did I ever end up there? Maybe you're struggling with different addictions. Maybe the party scene just has got you all trapped in knots. So many women are struggling with depression, cutting, eating disorders. I mean, we could all sit here, and I could list, I could list you my list. You guys could list your list. It's all, all of our lists are going to be different, yet all of our lists are going to be the same. Because all of us have been used, and all of us have used others. So today, today, I can't wait. I'm so excited. We are calling out the cycle of use, and it's, it's going to stop today. Amen? It takes so much courage, you guys, to go up to a friend and say, I love you, but I'm pretty sure he's using you. To go up to one of your guy friends and say, you know, I really appreciate your friendship, but you're using my best friend, and I know it, and I can see it, and I can't let that happen. Is that a hard conversation to have? What would happen if we had it, though? Like, what would happen? We are all the walking wounded, but you know what? This is what, we're like the woman at the well. Do you guys know this story? This is one of my favorite images. Can y'all just like look at it for a minute, meditate on it, just look at that. Like the sun, look at her face. This story in the gospel, it just blows me away. And I, I wanna tell you a little bit about it. This woman at the well, she comes to the well alone. And the reason why that is so interesting is because in that day and age, women never went to the well alone. They actually timed up their meeting there so that they could have their girl time. Because you're at home, like, baking bread or doing fun stuff, I don't know. And so they're like, okay, let's go to the well, like, get two, okay, I'll see you at the well, see you at the well. And they all go to the well together, and they, you know, get water and go back, but that was like their hangout time. And this woman is alone at the well. So that should instantly trigger something, right? And the story goes on, and Jesus is there, and he talks with her and finds out that she, she's had five husbands, and the man that she's currently living with is not her husband. So you know that she's been used, and she's been broken, and she has things in her life that are going on that are hard for her. And Jesus comes, and he, he sits with her, and he talks with her. And you know what, he, he looks at her, and this is what I want you guys to remember. He knows he knows her past, but he looks into her eyes. He doesn't see her past. You know what he sees? Emptiness, hollowness, loneliness. And he looks at her with the eyes, the loving eyes of our Lord, and he says, the water of this world is going to leave you thirsty. The water of this world is going to leave you thirsty. But I want to give you living water, and you will never thirst again. Eternal water the water of eternity. And she looks at him, and I'm telling you guys, 
it's such a cool story because she leaves there and she goes and tells everyone about our Lord, like that. Is that not how we are? We're so worried, we're so anxious, we're so bothered, we have so many anxieties, so many fears, and then you look into Christ's eyes and you're like, how did I forget that this is where I am loved? How did I forget? Like when he looked at her, he, he showed her her worth and her dignity. He didn't see her past, he saw her future. And he looked at her with such love that she was like, yes. And this is what I want you guys to remember. Those five husbands, those six men in her life, she was looking for something. She wanted something. She didn't feel whole. She went to them. Here's what I want you to remember. No man, no physical man can ever be your savior. None, right? No man can be your savior. And here's why. If you try to make your significant other the love of your life, your best friend, if you try to make him your God, all love that you ever could have had is going to fail. That's too much pressure to put on him. If I, you saw a swath, if, if I told Andy, okay, just so you know, I'm gonna come to you with everything I'm feeling, all my hurts, all my anxieties, and like I expect you to fill me up and make me whole, okay? Go. If I did that to him, it's too much. Is he God? No. I didn't, I didn't, like in high school, that was not, my, I was like, okay, which guy am I gonna date? Who can give me the most, like, emotional satisfaction here, who's gonna make me look the best, who's, you know, I, I mean, I was all about what can this guy do for me, right? I wanted him to be my savior. I wanted him to take every, all my pain away. It's so backwards. The Lord wants us to come to him and let him be your savior. Amen, yeah? The woman at the well wants you to bring, every, like she wants you to learn the lesson that she learned, which was to look into our Lord's eyes and lay everything at his feet. I want you to bring all those insecurities, your past, it's your past. Like, we're looking to the future, just like the woman at the well. I want you guys to bring everything that you're feeling and I want you to lay it at his feet today. And look at my eyes, look at me, everybody. Not for a second do I think that this is easy. Not for a second do I not know how hard it is to be in your seat not to not worry about who you're gonna marry in your vocation. I know how freaked out you are about who you're gonna marry, who, what you're called to is your vocation, who you're gonna date, who you're gonna marry. Is it not the number one thing you think about? Everyone nod your head up and down because I, I know that it is. I'm not for a second say, you guys, it's gonna be fine, don't, don't worry. That's not what I'm saying. But I have a different plan. The best dating advice I ever received was from a priest on a retreat. So anyone that wants to tell you priests don't know what's up, mm, whatever, okay? Um, I was at a retreat in college, early in college, and I go into the confessional, and I pretty much had the confession of what I just told you, right? Like, everything that I was struggling with, I just laid it out, and I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, I am so obsessed. I'm so worried about this. I don't know what to do. And the priest was like, Sarah, and I was like, dang it, he knows who I am. <laughs> it's hard. I lost my voice at praise and worship last night, so sorry, but loving the Lord. Um, and so it's like, he's like, Sarah, and I was like, dang it. And he goes, this is what I want you to do. He said, I want you to run to our Lord. I don't want you to look in any other direction. And when you get to him, I want you to lay all of this at his feet, and I want you to fall into his arms. And I want you to let him love you and make you whole and heal you. And then when you're strong and you're ready, I want you to run with him and then I want you to glance to the side and see who's running with you. A million weights fell off my shoulders that day because it wasn't about me anymore. What can I do to be more perfect? What can I do to be more loved? What can I do to get attention? What can I do to be with that guy that I really think I need to be with? It wasn't about what I was gonna do anymore. It was about running with the Lord, all focus on him, and trusting God that when it was time, I could glance. Or in my case, Swath was like, ran past me and I was like, I'm going with it. Do you know what I mean? That's what I want for you. So what do we typically do as women? I always say, okay, single women, we spend, you guys spend 80% of your time worrying about who you're gonna date, who you're eventually marry, what he's gonna do for you, how he's gonna make you feel, and how good you're gonna look doing it. 
right? 80% of our time goes to that. 20% of our time goes to like preparing for the man that we were going to be with. What do I mean by that? Putting Christ to the center of our lives. Healing. Figuring out this. The mess inside, right? Not creating more mess and more drama, but like figuring it out, right? 20% goes to that. What would, what would happen if we flipped it? What would happen if we spent 80% of our time doing what it is that we really feel called God calling us to do, coming closer to him, growing in friendship with these phenomenal women that are around you today, and spent, I will give you 20%, okay, I'll give it to you. You go mentally stalk your little heart out, okay? I'll give you 20%, but I need 80% from you, right? All across the country, all across the world, there's girls that email me and say, I have your quote in my dashboard. I have your quote on my mirror. I have your quote everywhere because every day I have to remind myself. Become the woman of your dreams and you'll attract the man of your dreams. Become the woman of your dreams and you'll attract the man of your dreams. You guys, nothing is more true. You guys trust God with everything except for this relationship thing. Amen? It is so hard to give it over. Become the woman of your dreams and you'll attract the man of your dreams. Trust me on this. Who is, who is the woman of your dreams? When that special guy comes along and falls in love with you, who is he gonna be falling in love with? Do you know? I want you to know. I want you to become this fabulous rock star of a woman who has God anchored in the center of her life, animating, the Holy Spirit animating her soul, right? I want you to figure out what do you want to do with your life? What is it? Not, not what does your boyfriend want you to do? What do you want to do with your life? Who are you? Not worried about anything else. And you know what? The guy that God has chosen for you is going to be so ridiculously in love with you or attracted, he is going to be fallen all over himself trying to get to you. Praise God because it's who you are, not who you aren't, not who you should be. Amen? Right? I want you to keep this at the forefront of your mind. Become the one of your dreams and you'll attract the man of your dreams. When I was in college, um, I, a, a bunch of us girls decided we were gonna ask a group of our guy friends, what is the most attractive thing about a woman? Scary, right? We were like, be gentle. And we said, what's the most attractive thing to you guys in a woman? And so they like went off into this little like man huddle. You know, y'all seen like a man huddle? Like the posse. And they're over there talking and like five minutes later they come back and they're like, okay, we got it, we got it, we got it. And we're like, oh, this is gonna be good. We're like expecting like measurements, right? You know, like, um, what is it? And they come back and they said, okay, we got it. Holiness and confidence. And we were like, dang, that's kind of deep, right? Like, we weren't expecting something like that. And they're like, yeah, yeah. They're like, holiness and confidence. Even guys, even guys who aren't into their faith would say they want a girl who knows who she is, does the right thing. I was like, oh my gosh, that's kind of true. Wow, you are a lot deeper than I thought you were, right? And they're, they, so they told us that. And it was so funny, ladies, because we all, like, a bunch of us girls went back to our suite that night, our dorm room, and we were all like, I have no clue how to be that. And we were all like, no. Like, how do you be holy? How do you be confident? It's like, I have no idea. Do you guys know what I mean? I was like, oh, excellent. So what they want, we don't even know how to be, right? So throughout the years, I have been asking women. I've been asking men. I've been asking couples. I've been asking everybody. What do you think, how do you think this looks? And through that, I've come up with a list. And I call her the simply irresistible woman. Do you want to see what she looks like? She is simply irresistible, feminine, confident, and virtuous. Feminine. She's gentle and kind, graceful and sincere, patient and flexible. She doesn't gossip. She isn't rude. Drama is a major turnoff. She's poised and modest, open to the needs of others, nurturing and welcoming, joyful and fun. She's confident. She stands up for what is right. She has courage. She's not afraid to confront and help someone. She's genuinely excited for another, not jealous or vain. Let me repeat that one. She's genuinely excited for another, not jealous or vain. She's intelligent. She speaks with conviction. She's a true leader. She's responsible, prudent, honest, sensitive to the needs of others. And she is virtuous. She puts others first before herself. She's excellent in all things, chastity, sobriety, and academic excellence. She's striving. She's not lazy. She's not led solely by her emotions. She has balance and order, charity and service. She forgives. She's trustworthy, loyal, and pure. 
when I, give, when I put this list up in front of the guys, they all start making like grunting sounds. They love it. Okay, does she, is she phenomenal? Okay, everyone just had like a major freak out moment where they're like, Sarah, you've got to be kidding me, right? Okay, can you put the list back up, do you mind? Okay, so this woman, she's phenomenal. This is what I call, you guys, this is 21st century virtue, right? 21st century virtue, what does it look like? This. And now I, I remember, don't freak out. The key word here is, I am not asking you to be perfect. Our Lord is perfect, we follow him. I'm asking you to strive to be this phenomenal woman. The key word is striving. Put it, write it down, striving, right? Here's why, okay, she's pretty great. And by the way, this list, I have this thing called, I call it the virtue challenge. And I have women and men all over the country, all over the world that take the virtue challenge. And on my website, emotionalvirtue.com, I have these here. And women and men will pick one a week and work on it all week. And they have accountability partners and they get together and they talk about how they live it out and how they can live it out better. Did you, as you guys are reading this list, did you look at it and say like, oh, I got that, I got that, I got that. And then you're like, eee. right? And this is my list, like this is my list. I use it, I, I do it too. As a, as a mom and as a woman and as a married woman, it's like I have to work on all of those things. And some of them are harder than others, right? But here's why it's worth it, okay? Simply Irresistible Woman, meet the Simply Irresistible Man. He is masculine, he is confident, and he is virtuous. I switched out, I put, took out feminine and put a masculine, check, check this guy out. Leader, provider, protector, initiator, chivalrous, brave and courageous, Gentle, respectful, intuitive, patient, honorable, joyful, and fun. Everyone just start fanning yourself. Just start fanning yourself. Just make it happen. Um, I gave, and the confident and virtuous are the exact same list, okay? So we all, so I gave this talk one time, and these, these guys were so great. They were college guys, and I put this up, and this guy came up to me after his huge football player came up to me, and he's like, uh, ma'am. I said, yeah, and he's like, uh, I really liked your talk, but I didn't know if I could get that list because I didn't know what a couple of those words meant. <laughs> and I was like, you are, I love you, you're so great. And the reason why I love that guy and he's so great is because he's trying. Amen? I mean, I think it was chivalrous. I think that was the word he didn't know. And he was so funny because I was like, he's like, that's like opening doors for people, right? And I was like, yes. I go, but here's a, I go, here's a little secret. Right? I like to give the guys some help. Do you guys need some help sometimes? Right, okay. So I give the guys some help. So I'm like, okay, guys, listen, listen, listen. And they're all like zoned in. I mean, I, they eat out of my hand, right? They're like, tell me what I need to do to understand women, right? And so I'm like, okay, guys, come here, come here. Here's the deal. It's not about the door. And they're like, what? And I'm like, it's not about the door. Okay, so woman, beautiful woman, door. Beautiful woman, about to walk through door. You think to yourself, I'm gonna get the door to anticipate her needs. It's not the door. You, as a man, are anticipating her needs. Amen. When my husband, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when my husband, um, I always feel bad because like sometimes I'll be like walk, like we're walking into like, you know, somewhere, a church or something, and into church or like some restaurant or something, I'm like walking and I turn around and he's got like, like the diaper bag, my purse, a child, like someone else, you know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, you're anticipating my needs and I am leaving you in the, like here, let me help you, right? Like even in marriage, you watch your husband anticipate your needs. You watch men. If you wanna really know how a guy treats a woman, if you wanna know what a guy's really like, a couple places to look. How does he treat women that he's not interested in? How does he treat his mom? How does he treat female teachers? Nod your head up and down. Okay, yeah, yeah, watch, okay? Watch men, you can tell so much through those fit, like friend groups, what guys are really like. And then I tell the guys that, and so they like are totally putting their A game on, right? They're like, oh shoot, was I ever mean to my mom in front of that cute girl? Think, 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 think. No, okay, I wasn't mean to that, I, I, like, I was good to my mom in front of that cute girl, right? So, okay, so a simply irresistible woman, simply irresistible man. Can you imagine that couple coming together? What, right? Do you know why? Because it's not all about use. It's not all about themselves. It's not all about what you can give me. It's about what can I do for you. Do you guys know what I mean? That couple, they're not concerned about 
filling anything. They filled themselves with our Lord, and now they're just running together. How awesome is that? Here's what, okay, if you don't remember anything from this talk, remember this. Chastity and modesty is not a bunch of no's. It's a yes to that woman. It's a yes to being that woman. And it's a yes to being ready for that man. Yeah? Chastity, I know it's hard. Like, don't, you know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know it's hard. I know. But don't think of it as a Debbie Downer, like, Sarah, you're ruining my life here, right? Chastity and modesty isn't a bunch of no's. It's a yes to being that woman, and it's a yes to being ready for that man. Isn't that just, like, a phenomenal way to think about it? That's what I want you guys to think about when you, when you look at it and you see it in that way. That's my favorite. Here's your new motto right here. Dance with God, and he will let the man he's chosen for you cut in. Don't run around the dance floor throwing yourself at guys trying to fill the void. But don't stand there like a wallflower feeling sorry for yourself either. Dance with God, get better at dancing, so you're ready for the partner God taps and has prepared just for you. Can I hear it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The world will leave you thirsty. It's bankrupt, you guys. The ideal set, it's there. But I want you to think about that couple, that simply irresistible couple, because that is the relationship I want for you. That's the marriage I want for you. That's the family I want for you. Try to, try to begin with the end in mind, right, today. Don't just think about what's gonna feel good today or what's gonna feel good this weekend, or what's gonna feel good when you get back. Think about where am I going, and what does God want me to be doing to prepare myself to be there? Because I wanna rock it. Like, I wanna rock this. So, this is your new motto, and here's our new plan. You with me, ladies? Our new plan, today forward. Know what sends you onto the emoticoaster. Amen? Okay, some of us can handle like chick flick on repeat. Some of us can handle Taylor on repeat. I personally am not one of them. I just emotionally can't handle it, right? Like, it's too much for me. I made the mistake one time. You guys, you'll love this. So the girls, some girls of mine were like, Sarah, you would love this movie. It's so great. I'm like, okay, great. So made the mistake to watch it like by myself like at 11 o'clock at night because that's when moms watch movies. But anyway, so I'm like sitting there and I put it on. It was P.S. I Love You. You guys ever seen that movie? People. Okay, I watched the movie. Like, like, I don't know if there's a level where you go from like crying to bawling to hysterical. I don't know where that level was, but I was like over it. And I get into bed and I like crawl next to Swap and I'm like, don't die. Like, don't ever die. Do you guys know what I mean? Like, I emotionally can't handle some of this stuff. And that's what I mean by the, emo the, the emoto coaster, knowing what sends you on there. Some of you might be okay with a little bit. Some of you might be like, okay, like that stuff does crazy stuff to my emotions. Like I can't handle it, right? Whoever it is, I'm not saying you have to go throw everything out. I'm just saying, watch what you let in because it messes with you. Do you guys know what I mean? Watch how much you let in because it messes with you. In the same way that our guys have to fight those battles, we have to fight it with our heart, right? When typically men are turned on by the eyes, I've been corrected that they're actually, a guy goes, no, we're actually turned on by all the senses. I'm like, oh, excellent, thank you, okay, good. I, was, I stand corrected. Men are turned on by all their senses. Women are typically turned on by what they hear, amen? And so it goes from the, the, the ear to the heart very quickly, right? Know what sends you on the emoto coaster. Number two, oh, oh, sorry, call out the cycle of use. Everyone together say, use. I will not use someone. Say, I will not use someone. For my own pleasure, whether emotionally or physically. Ever again. Okay, after me. I will not ever, I will not ever <laughs> allow myself to be used emotionally or physically, ever again. Amen, amen, yeah. Number three, 
run into the arms of our Lord and find rest. Don't walk, run. Today, tonight, this weekend. He wants to take everything. He wants it all. Give it to him and find rest. St. Faustina has this awesome quote that says, when I'm tired and burdened and overwhelmed, I go to Jesus and I curl up into his heart and I find rest. I use that quote in my life all the time, you guys, because life can be hard. And Jesus is always the answer. When you're tempted to run into the arms of a man, run into the arms of Jesus. Because the, the running into the arms of the man is going to bring with it probably a little bit of drama. Amen? And if we're going to, why don't we run into the arms of Jesus? Let him comfort us. Let him, let him tell you about your dignity and your worth and your beauty. Build yourself up with our Lord's love, and then those guys can come and run alongside with you and serve God with you. Such a better plan. Amen? Okay, who is really excited about becoming the woman of your dreams? Okay, I get giddy excited for you. Are you feeling it? Like, I am so pumped for you guys. Like, okay, what are you, freshmen, sophomore, juniors, seniors in high school? Every time I give this talk, I have at least one awesome rock star mom come up to me and go, where were you when I was 16? And you know what? I just hug that mom and I just love on her. And then she looks at me and she always says, I'm so glad that my daughter got to hear this when she was 16. Take that as our Lord's gift to you, that you get to become the woman of your dreams today. Amen? Like, that is the most exciting thing ever. And then next, this is what we're going to do next. Rock that simply irresistible list of virtues. It's going to be hard. You're going to totally stink at a lot of them. It's okay, right? Know the ones that are really hard and go for those, right? Know the ones that are easy for you and, and really encourage your other sisters that it's not the ones, the girls in your life that they're, that's not easy for. We have to be in this together. Okay, final thoughts. Is it hard to be a woman? A little louder, please. It's the competition and the comparing that goes on. You guys, like, let's, let's just make, okay, the whole use thing, we got that. Let's, like, tag onto that, that we promise as of today to never make life harder for another woman in our lives ever again. Amen? No more. We, we know how hard it is to be a woman. Let's not make it any harder on everyone else. Just because women, some women don't have the same struggles as you doesn't mean that they're not struggling. Girls always come up to me and be like, I had this email, it was awesome. She goes, why is it that the perfect girls who have everything that they want are happiest? And I'm thinking to myself, she's thinking like the most popular girl in school that has the quarterback boyfriend who like gets everything she wants. That's who she's thinking of. And my email back to her was, what do you think the pressure is like on her to keep that image up? What happens if she has a bad hair day and her boyfriend breaks up with her and she like falls down the stairs? That's a bad day. Can you imagine the pressure that's on some of those girls that have to have it all together? Everyone nod their head up and down. Are you following me? Promise me, promise me that from this day forward, you'll make it easier on your sisters in Christ and not harder. We have to be there for each other. Amen? Yeah? The last one is this one. Oh, sorry. Dance with God and trust that he will let the man he's chosen for you cut in. Okay, repeat after me. I trust. I trust. I trust you, Sarah. I trust you, Lord. I hand over my worry about my vocation. And that cute guy, that spouse that I'm worried about, I hand over all that, right? Okay, what's my point? Trust me. Trust my words. Trust God. I know that it's hard to hand over this whole relationship thing. I know it's hard. But if you do, it is unbelievable the amount of blessings that are going to flow from that. Remember the Deacon Ralph and those chains, man. What? That was awesome. I was like, yes. 
the, change that, the chains that we carry emotionally, how heavy are they? Heavy. I'm done with it. Are you done with it? Done with it. Right? Here's what I want you guys, I, our new plan going forward. I could not be more excited for you. This is day one, Steubenville 2013, day one. Amen. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, we come before you, and we just ask you to come into this place. And more than anything, Lord, I ask that these women look straight into your eyes the way that the woman at the well did, and they see your love for them as the chosen women that they are. You don't see their past, Lord. You don't see their failures. You don't see their insufficiencies. You see them, and you see their longing. You see their emptiness and their desire that they want to be made for more, to be with you. Show them their dignity and worth. Show them that you have a plan that they can trust, that they don't need to worry about running into anyone else's arms but yours, and that in trusting you, Lord, you're going to give them all of their heart's desires. To be able to surrender everything that they're feeling here this weekend, Lord, and be able to lay it at their feet, at your feet, to be able to look you in the eye and know that they're loved. I want you guys to repeat. This is what I want you guys to look up at the screen, and I want you to repeat after me. I'm a, I am loved. I'm enough. I'm never alone. I'm a daughter of God.